We've had to pretty much isolate our residents just to make sure that they're safe from uh, the COVID infections that are out in the community. So we've limited visitors to just two uh, designated support persons that's at most of my sites. Uh, so they, they can't see their entire family anymore. You know, some of my patients have five kids, for example, and they don't get to see all of them. And they've lost a lot of that interaction with their family in person. You know, we, we try to do our best with Zoom and FaceTime, but, you know, human, require, human interaction requires touch and presence. And we've really noticed the effect on our residents without that. And I do believe in my heart of hearts that my residents who have passed away during COVID um, might have passed away from loneliness as they stopped eating as much, drinking as much, losing weight, and then dying from their dementia. The PCR testing, so the nasopharyngeal swab that everyone's quite familiar with at this point, we're waiting too long for that. Three or four days in long-term care for our patients, especially in an outbreak setting, um, where we're worried about trying to prevent that and cohorting patients who do have it, that's too long of a wait. Um, and by the time we get those results back, it's much too late. It would be nice if we had uh, a, a result in a day. I feel, especially at Linwood, seeing all of the infection practices, they've done really, really well. And we've had people even watch uh, different staff putting on and taking off their equipment and cleaning everything and yet we still had such high infectivity rates so in other words a lot of our residents got sick the vast majority of them despite these good practices um, and isolating them in their rooms and giving them their meals in their rooms and they still got it and I've seen nurses come in on their days off stay away past their shifts doing work that other team members usually would be doing but they're not there they've been working really really hard and I see that and they're amazing but at some point you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others and I, I worry about that for everyone in the healthcare profession right now and during the pandemic. We do know that even in the general community outside of long-term care, healthy people, younger people can get it too and suffer not only long-term consequences, but can also die from it, right? We shouldn't feel safer just because people with comorbidities tend to have worse outcomes. We still need to all practice our due diligence in following the public health guidelines. Even children have, you know, asthma, right? Or people who are 20, 30 years old may have one medical issue that's chronic and they may see their doctor once a year. That counts as a comorbidity. And are we again saying, well, it's because they have a comorbidity or I've heard it's their fault um, because they didn't take care of themselves. I think that's really callous and I feel like the pandemic should be teaching us how to be kind and compassionate for each other and help everyone else out. I really want to encourage everyone to follow the public health guidelines. I know it's Christmas and it's going to be hard. If we don't follow the rules now, this might be some people's last Christmas ever. We can't have that. We want to stay safe so that we can actually go in and see our families next Christmas and go into long-term care facilities and see our families there just like before. Um, and that's my, my greatest wish and hope is that we can get back together as humans and have that interaction no matter where it is.